Hello friends, I am Dr. Farin and let's do a rapid revision of antepartum hemorrhage. So what is antepartum hemorrhage? Antepartum hemorrhage is any bleeding which occurs from or into the genital tract after 28 weeks of period of gestation. Alright? What is the most common cause? Most common cause is placental and in that also abruptio placentae is commoner than placenta previa. The bleeding can also occur from the cervix or it can be indeterminate too. So let's discuss them one by one, okay? First of all, what is placenta previa? It is any placenta which is lying in the lower segment. So as per the older classification, the placenta previa was divided into four types. First was type 1 or also known as the lobe, where the distance of the lower edge of the placenta from the internal os was 2 cm, alright? The second was marginal, where the lower edge of the placenta is reaching the internal os, but it is not covering it. Okay, type 3 is partial where it is reaching the internal os and also covering it partially. Okay, over here and this part is left and type 4 where it is completely covering the internal os. Now as per the newer classification, low remains to be low lying alright and all these marginal, partial and complete have been grouped under major placenta previa alright. Now what is the etiology? The most common etiology is any previous scar on the uterus. It can be a previous cesarean section or a previous myomectomy. Here the risk is 5 times higher of having a placenta previa. Other causes can be a DNC, any uterine anomaly or a uterine fibroid which is not letting the placenta migrate upwards. Other causes are smoking and all the M's, maternal age more than 35, multiple pregnancy and multiparity. So what are the symptoms? Symptom is there will be sudden, painless, causeless and recurrent bleeding. So when the patient comes to us, we always go for the general examination followed by the local examination. So the general examination, we will check her vitals, pulse, her blood pressure. The patient can be in shock, all right? The pallor will be in proportion to the blood lost and local examination when we do, then she will have a bright red blood. Bright red blood indicates that she is having fresh bleeding. All right. On the abdominal examination, the size of the uterus will be equal to the period of gestation. The uterus will be relaxed if the patient is not in labor. There can be a malpresentation because the placenta is lying in the lower segment, right? So the baby can be breech or transverse. There can be a floating head of the baby. So since the placenta is covering the lower segment, the head of the baby will be floating and the FHS will be present. But in these patients, we do not do a pervaginal examination. So pervaginal examination is not to be done. What are the investigations? So first of all, when the patient comes to us, we ask for her ultrasonography report. If she does not have an ultrasonography report, we go for a total a transabdominal sonography. Okay. So over here, we can see that this is the head of the baby, right? This black part is the bladder which is filled with urine and the placenta is seen covering the lower segment. So this entire part is the placenta. So it is confirmed that the placenta is low lying. Just in case if the transabdominal ultrasound is inconclusive, then we go for the MRI which will clearly show that the placenta is lying in the lower segment. But again, I would like to say that MRI is only done when the ultrasound is inconclusive. Other tests that we will do for these patients are CBC and cross matching of the blood. Now, how do you manage the patient? So first of all, we ask certain questions. Is the patient hemodynamically stable? Has the bleeding stopped? Is the FHS stable? Is the patient in labor or not? Okay. So if the answer to all of this is yes. Okay. Then the second question is, is there any prematurity? Is the baby of less than 37 weeks? Okay. So if the answer is yes, that the baby is premature and the patient is stable, then we go for the expectant management, which is also known as the McCaffey Johnson. Okay. So what we will do here is that we will keep the blood cross match. We will send her CBC and we will give her steroid because she can go into labor again anytime and we will observe the patient if the answer to all of this is no okay 
so we will deliver the patient by cesarean section now what is the uh, why did we classify the placenta into low lying and as major placenta previa so importance of that comes over here so if the placenta is low lying all right then we can go for a vaginal delivery but if it is a major placenta previa right then we have to go for a cesarean section so this was all about placenta previa thank you